good news for all of you. The UK courts have decided it is unlawful to send any refugees to Rwanda. A huge cheer of relief from those whose lives will be affected by today's ruling. Men and women seeking asylum in the UK, potentially threatened with deportation to Rwanda. In the latest legal wrangle, the Court of Appeal ruled that the controversial policy is unlawful. The High Court's decision that Rwanda was a safe third country is reversed, and that unless and until the deficiencies in its asylum processes are corrected, removal of asylum seekers to Rwanda will be unlawful. Mohammed arrived here on a small boat last month and has been sent this Home Office letter telling him he could be sent to Rwanda. How did that make you feel? No, no, Rwanda, no. Rwanda, it's very bad. It's... The 26-year-old, who says he fled the political regime in Egypt, describes feeling frightened about the prospect of being deported to Rwanda, but the policy hadn't deterred him from making the channel crossing in the first place. Why did you come here on a boat? Because the government says you shouldn't be coming that way, it's illegal, they want to stop the boats. I want to live in England. I want uh, safety in England. The case had been brought by 10 people from countries including Syria, Sudan and Iraq. Their lawyers argued there was a risk that the asylum seekers would be forcibly sent back to their home countries after arriving in Rwanda. We're delighted that the Court of Appeal agrees with us that Rwanda is not a safe third country. The Court of Appeal has ruled that removals to Rwanda cannot lawfully proceed until or unless these deficiencies in the Rwandan asylum system are remedied. The Rwandan government insisted today it's one of the safest countries in the world. It signed a £140 million deal with the UK, but the accommodation blocks it's built for the asylum seekers are still sitting empty. For a Home Secretary who said it's her dream to see asylum seekers sent to East Africa, today's ruling a potential nightmare. We've got an unsustainable problem that we need to fix. And whilst, of course, we are disappointed with the decision today, we will be uh, putting in an application to seek permission to appeal um, uh, the judgment very, very swiftly. The ruling has implications for the government's pledge to stop the boats, one of five election promises it's struggling to achieve. Only 1% of those arrived by small boats have had their claims processed. And so the government's got no plan. It's got a gimmick, which is the Rwanda scheme, a gimmick, um, which has already cost the taxpayer £140 million and nobody's been removed. Today's ruling means it's unlikely that any planes will be taking off for Rwanda anytime soon, despite some newspapers being briefed that there are secret Home Office plans for them to leave as early as September. The issue could still be being debated into the next election, something the government wanted to avoid. But away from the political arguments and the legal arguments, there are the moral arguments. More and more people in the um, United Kingdom are beginning to realise that the whole plan to send people to Rwanda is completely flawed. The government has said today that the British people want to see the boat stopped. We, we all want to see the boat stopped. There is an easy way of doing it. And already we know that there isn't a single asylum seeker from Ukraine or from Hong Kong arriving on a small boat. The government says it fundamentally disagrees with today's ruling and will challenge it in the Supreme Court. Well, we did ask the government for an interview, but no one was available. Earlier, though, I spoke to the Conservative peer, Lord Garnier, who was Solicitor General, a top government lawyer under David Cameron. I began by asking whether today's ruling means Suella Bravman's deal with Rwanda is worthless. On the evidence that the, the court has seen, they don't uh, believe that Rwanda constitutes a, a safe third country. Uh, so something will have to be done about that. It may well be that the Supreme Court will agree with the Lord Chief Justice in the minority in the Court of Appeal and with the High Court. Uh, but it may well be that uh, it won't, in which case the government will have to come up with some other practical solution. Well, is there a practical solution that would fix this problem? There's always a practical solution. It may not be what everybody would like or what some people would like, be like, but there'll be some very clever people uh, thinking how best to mitigate the adverse consequences for the government of this decision, either at this stage or at the Supreme Court stage, uh, and to make sure that the Prime Minister can deliver on his promises to reduce the numbers of boat people coming across 
uh, the English Channel. Well, that is the point, isn't it? Because he said today, it is this country and your government, he said, addressing the public, mm. who should decide who comes here, not criminal gangs. The Home Secretary says British people want to stop the boats. Do you agree with their sentiments there? Of course I do, but uh, they're not two mutually exclusive sets of principles. One is that the elected government should be able to do what the electorate requires of it, but secondly, the government has to abide by the rule of law. And the great thing about the announcements we've heard from the Prime Minister and the Home Secretary today is that they have not been abusive uh, about the courts. Right, you were there worried were, they might be. There, given have been, past there have been Conservative governments in the not too distant past who, when they receive a, an adverse judgment, simply abuse the courts. This Prime Minister does not do that. That is a tremendous advance. He's still going to appeal, though. Well, that's, that's within the constitution and the legal system. And it may well be that the Supreme Court will agree with the uh, government's appeal, but the thing is, you do the appeal, you don't shout at the judges. You've got concerns about the bill as it currently stands. I had concerns about the bill, as I made clear at second reading, that the government was in danger of disassociating itself from the rule of law and adjusting our relationship to international treaties, such as the ECHR. The European Convention on exactly. Human Rights. Exactly. Well, there are plenty of Conservative MPs today calling for the government to withdraw from the European Convention on Human Rights. Rishi Sunak is under pressure from his right-wing MPs. Do you think he might cave to that? No, I don't. Why I... not? Because he will not um, buckle to that sort of pressure. It would be hugely con contrary to our interests, particularly at a time when we're uh, looking at Russia invading the Ukraine uh, and, if you like, completely disapplying any allegiance to any form of legality for our government uh, to say, right, well, we don't approve of the ECHR because it produces inconveniences. Of course, uh, judicial decisions and uh, treaties, international treaties, occasionally produce uh, inconvenient answers. But that doesn't mean to say you throw away the rule book and say we're going to ignore it. Well, spell out for your right-wing colleagues who are calling for withdrawal from the Convention, what would it do to Britain's reputation overseas? If you want to be uh, similar to China, to Russia, uh, if you want to be one of those countries which becomes uh, ludicrous for uh, ripping up a, a treaty that we have been a member of, and indeed which we drafted in the, in the 1950s, go ahead. We should not, for short-term political gain, disassociate ourselves from the European Convention of Human Rights, which has stood us in good stead and many other countries who look to us uh, to comply with and to take a lead in uh, questions of the rule of law. A lot of your colleagues would be shocked to hear you compare the UK in the same breath as Russia and China. Well, uh, there are only, I think, a, a couple of countries that have been required to leave the ECHR. Uh, one was the Greece under the colonels, and I think the other was, was Russia. Um, it, it's not difficult to make those compa comparisons if you, if you behave in a way that they would approve of. Lord Garnier, thank you very much. Not at all.